Thank you so much, Russ. Great to have you all here this morning. We continue our Lenten season. We are now just a week away from Holy Week. We welcome all of you today and especially our guests. We have a special guest today, Pastor David Holtz, who is Executive Director of Luther Crest Bible Camp, our camp. Last year, you were very generous to the Prepare the Way campaign at Luther Crest. We sent nine campers there, and this summer, we are taking a big step in that in August, we're hosting a day camp where Luther Crest counselors will help VBS in June, uh, day camp in August. So we'll have some really tremendous things for our kids this summer. So thanks so much for coming, David, and he is going to be, be sharing the, the sermon today. We thank all those hosting our worship today. Pastor Cassie is our liturgist. We thank ushers, greeters, and readers. Our senior choir is singing, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Russ Bunker is their director, and Stacy Minch is accompanist. We are continuing our observance of Lent. We will hear a video today. We will have a noisy offering. And on Wednesday evening, our Lenten services will use that theme. And this week, John Halverson will share his stories of generosity. Uh, just a note about our noisy offering. So we have just a kind of a light competition between the two services about that, right? So, so far, the 830 service has $580.45. Okay, now listen carefully. $580.45. 1045 has 579.69, an 80 cent difference. Just saying. We have a $5,000 matching gift that will help amplify your gift, and it is, it is the um, Monday thir Thursday service that's kind of the focus of that offering, but you can make your gift at any time, but our goal is 15000 We hope you will feel like you can, you can help us with that. Um, so back to the Lenten dinner. The dinner is at 5.30, and uh, we're going to hear more about the handbells, but they have a spaghetti dinner this week to benefit the handbells. That's happening at 5.30 this week. The flowers by the altar are reminders of the memorial service on Thursday for Ryan Palmer, son of Judd and, and Ellen Palmer. Uh, that's a tough experience for them, and we thank you for your support for them. We also express our sympathy to Arlene Stone, whose father, Ernest Decker, died last week. And at this time, I'd like to invite Becky Stoley. I'm not sure where Becky is. Okay. Okay, it's Gail. Okay, all right. You've changed. <laughs> to talk about the new bell choir and our fund drive to pay for a new set of bells, so thank you. Good morning. Mike and Gail Pickett here again to talk about the handbells. <laughs> My sidekick. First, I want to thank everyone for your generosity in helping to raise the funds for the handbell ministry. We've raised almost $9,000, and that's awesome. Um, so thank you so much for your generosity, and this is going towards our total purchase of about $14,000 necessary to buy the handbells and all the necessary accessories, which I, I had no, aware, uh, no knowledge of beforehand, but there's a lot that goes along with this. Um, so thank you again, and Mike is so excited to be able to ring another bell. We're getting, whoa, we're, <laughs> we're getting closer, so... So toward that goal, we're having a fundraiser dinner the pastor was mentioning on Wednesday, March 16th. Um, it's going to be a spaghetti feed, and it, this will be the Lenten, uh, before the Lenten service, the dinner, um, about 5.30. So if you can come and be generous with your free will donation, that would be awesome. Finally, Sherry Johnson has continued to assure me that any man, any person, man, woman, child, young or old, who is, has any interest at all in ringing the handbells can certainly come out and see what this is all about. We're still recruiting ringers, so if you're at all interested, once we have them in hand, please be sure to come out and see what this is all about. So, thank you so much again, and let's get the bells ringing. <laughs> At this time, we take a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves for our worship.
Will you please rise as you are able for our call to worship? We gather here because Christ is here, through bread and wine, through water and word. See, the home of God is among mortals. We gather here and delight in God's generosity. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no resources, come eat. We gather here and extend God's generous welcome to all. Tayan Uye, you are welcome. God is generous. We are welcome. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and calls us to give, serve, listen, and love. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. for 
Let us pray together. Spirit of life, inhabit our reflections, our actions, our hope. Guide us to understand all things in light of your great promises. Amen. You may be seated as we have a musical message from our senior choir. This time we're going to watch a short video from the ELCA uh, World Hunger Campaign um, about refugees especially. 
we could cue that up at this time. I am Yidu. I came from Nepal, but actually I am a citizen of Bhutan. I am Tika, same as what you told. I also came from Nepal. Actually, I am a citizen of Bhutan. They used to arrest Nepali people take our daughters, wives with them and there is no any freedom of speech, no human rights. They did not allow us to celebrate, observe our Nepali tradition and culture. So we are compelled to leave their country and we fled from Bhutan and we came to Nepal. And in Nepal we stay as a refugee for 18 years. I feel refugee life was a very poor life. We have no things to buy, everything, no money to buy vegetable also. So it is very difficult to join hand and mouth. I was very small, hot, not house. <laughs> Made of bamboo and thighs, plastic. When the rainfall, all the um, waters enter inside our house. After 10 years, other agencies, this uh, UNHCR, or that they made the proposal uh, whether you want to go to the third country settlement or not. So we voluntarily fill up the form, we will not go back to the, our country. On 13 May, we left our refugee camp. So tonight we're waiting for a refugee family to arrive from uh, Nepal. They were in Bhutan. They've been in Nepal for 17 years in a refugee camp there. They're coming via Paris and Newark to join family that's here in the Chicago area. I pray to God, no? Without any difficulties, I should reach to the America. Since I'm a small baby, no? Okay. No, we're, we're headed right now. We're going to your new apartment. Refugee One provides uh, opportunity for refugees fleeing war, persecution, and terror to build lives of self-reliance in safety and dignity here in the United States of America. Refugee One is the Illinois affiliate for Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service. Hi. 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 Welcome to Chicago. It's crucial to give the right start to refugees and um, our wraparound and holistic approach here at Refugee One provides just that. The programs that we offer, you know, whether it be the initial intake and assessment to the on-site ESL classes, the employment services, the women's empowerment program, the youth program, you know, the senior services, all these programs are in place so that they can be armed with what they need to be successful in their new life here in the U.S. I think we should not, we will not get this type of difficulties, we will not face these type of problems. I think it's an advanced country, all people will treat us so well. Most refugees enter the country thinking that it's going to be the land of milk and honey and things are going to be very easy, but little do they realize that there are every bit as many challenges meeting them here as what they endured in the refugee camps in Nepal. Okay, let's try that one more time. He is very motivated. 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 
Motivated. Motivated. Motivated. Motivated. This one, this one, this one. This one. It seems that I, I am a baby, newly born one. It takes time to grow. Everything is new to me. Please read number four. Please. Number four. Mm -hmm. Bill always comes to work on time. He is very punctual. Punctual. Right on. Good job. All right. Carlos is always friendly and pleasant to customers. Pleasant. Pleasant. Good. Yes, smiling. Smiling. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to give a lot of thanks to the immigration organization who has brought us to here to see the new world. It is only because of them we are here in USA. And also, I want to give a lot of thanks to the Lutheran Church. The ELCA World Hunger Program grant is very, very supportive to us in helping us to provide food for newly arriving refugees. Water. <laughs> Thanks to the grant that we receive from the ELCA World Hunger Program, we can prepare properly to welcome the family, stock up the apartment with groceries, nutrition, with, with food that would last at least two weeks for them, and also prepare a culturally appropriate meal for the family so when they first arrive to the apartment there is a home cooked meal waiting for them. By giving opportunities to such people coming to the United States to live, we're giving them a home and an opportunity at a new life right here in our own community. And we do it with the help of congregations of faith and Lutheran churches. Our congregation has for these many years supported Refugee One and its ministries in resettlement, and we are also supporters of ELCA World Hunger. The fact that ELCA World Hunger grants can help to support these families that we can help to bring here uh, is just wonderful to know that. Again, I got reborn here with the help of Lutheran Church. I hope to be a great person and happy life in the USA. I want to invite the kids to come, start coming down if you would. You know, we've got a couple of reeds in the balcony. Megan and Joe, we need your help today. Any other kids out there that can help us? That would be awesome. That would be great, Dave. <clears throat> All right, there are some kids. There's Tommy and... Great. So you guys know how this works, don't you? And we're thinking especially about refugees. Can you imagine, you kids, what it would be like to be living in a country where war or you know, being treated really, really badly meant that you had to move from your house? And, and wouldn't you appreciate it if there was somebody that said, we're going to help you find a new home that's going to be a good place for you to go to school and all those things? That's what we're doing today. Among other kinds of programs, we're helping refugees. So this time, you guys know the drill. If you've got some money to drop in their can, could you lift your hand up and let them know? And Joe, maybe you could head right down this way. Megan, could you go down that way? David, you're so, if you're so willing, that would be awesome. Why don't you head down around that way? You, could you do that too? That would be just awesome. Isn't that a beautiful sound, by the way? That's just great. Thank you. So thank you so much for your help. Remember, 
80 cents separates these two, these two programs. Um, there is one person here who, who is particularly competitive and just say, okay, how big a check do I have to write so that we win? I don't know if that's allowed, but I guess so. But thank you so much for your, for your help. Okay, so when you made it to everybody, why don't you bring that up here? Tommy, bring that up here and we'll just pour that right into here. Thank you, awesome. Great, Joel, appreciate that. You can pour that right in there. Thank you, Tommy, right in there. Great. Thanks very much, you guys. How about if we close with a prayer today? Could you pray with me? We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have been good to us, that you have been good to us. Help us to be good to others. Help us to be good to others. Amen. Thank you very much for your help today. We'll continue with the reading. The Old Testament lesson is from Psalm 102, verses 12 through 17, a reading from the Psalms. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come, for your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Gospel lesson is from the book of Mark, chapter 13, reading verses 1 through 8 and 24 through 37. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will this be, and what will, what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. Uh, are you awake? Yes. Well, good. You always should be awake when you're here at church, right? Otherwise, you know you're going to heaven. So thank you for the little chuckle. I appreciate that. Yeah. Friends, uh, I always get called in, not always, I get called in in the most interesting times to do some preaching. Uh, most often or not, it's in a tough area. And I wonder, what's that all about? Are you, Cassie, Phil, challenging me to talk about the end times today? Oh, why are we so concerned, Russ, with the end times? Are you concerned? Are you concerned? Why are we so enthralled with the end times? Just recently, I don't know if the show's done anything yet, but uh, there's a, uh, a show called, what, is it Me and the Apocalypse that's on? Or maybe a couple of trailers or a couple of small shows have come on. Uh, and it's the setting of, of the end of the world is coming. You know, we've seen a number of movies out there uh, about the apocalypse coming. What's that like? Uh, we heard of a small book series called The Left Be You guys remember all that one? The Left Behind series. Um, my buddy Brian Scott, a uh, former pastor down in Red Wing, just uh, wrote a book about the end times. Uh, and it's getting a lot of play about his view, which is a Lutheran Christian view of the end times, totally opposite of left behind, um, but enthralled. It draws people in. Well, today we hear from Mark a story of Jesus' explanation of the end times. Well, why are we so enthralled with that? Maybe the even more question is, why do we even follow this Jesus who talks in this way? What is it? Well, to set the stage, uh, Jesus, and of course, over the last couple of Sundays, I think you guys have been reading through Mark, is that right? So you're, you've been hearing these parables and these experiences that Jesus has had in the temple. And so today it starts out with their exit, right? And a few of his disciples are walking along. Imagine yourself leaving the temple today, walking outside, You've got uh, maybe your pal with you or another uh, trusted friend. You say, man, you turn around and you look, man, this church, look at this place. It's awesome. The stones are huge. The, uh, the, the bricks are beautiful. Beautiful display board that we can tell our story. We've got great pictures. What a place. And your trusted friend turns to you and say, none of this matters. What does that do to you? Especially as a disciple, you're hearing Jesus all the time say these weird and opposite things of what maybe you had grown up with, with the laws that your Jewish uh, 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 rabbis were telling you or your trusted Pharisees or others who have been telling you all these things that gets you ready. But Jesus says, dudes, this doesn't matter. And then they leave, and they walk, 
and they go out. How far is the Mount of Olives? Do you, are you any familiar with where they were from? Was it a couple of miles? Well, we'll say five and a half, all right? Five and a half mile walk out to the Mount of Olives. And, and all that time, those disciples are sitting there going, what was that all about? Well, not knowing if that was James, John, or Peter, or Andrew that asked him those questions or showed them the the stones, there's three of the other disciples that say, well, tell us more about this experience. What is this going to be like? Why are they so infatuated with the end times? Were they worried? Were they having fear of the end times? Were they, were they experiencing something that they thought, oh Lord, the world is going to come to an end? Well, they were being reminded of some of the great teachings about the coming Messiah and what that was all about. I believe that that's why, in one way, is why we are so infatuated with the apocalypse, why it draws our attention Because we know in some ways through the Holy Scriptures and many other stories that have been shared about what the end times might be like and when is it going to come. Well, today we are reminded of that, of what life is like when this end times. Uh, Jesus says in one of the, right at the end of the verse, I think it's verse 8, that uh, you will know the end time. I forgot my glasses, so hurry. Sorry, this is but the beginning of the birth pains. I was asking my wife a little bit about birth pains um, and maybe some chuckles from some others who have had that experience. Um, But when those first set in of the birth pains, now I'm talking from this third person who hasn't experienced this at all, so this is the stories that were shared. That is just the beginning. It seems like eternity that those things take place. For some, it goes really fast when you're thinking time-wise, but for others, it could be days. Um, There are many ups and downs, lefts or rights, but that is just the beginning, my wife said. She said, I'll never forget the experience of our first child, or Maddie, And that experience, she had been taught so much about what uh, to expect in those sort of things. But when it hit, she understood what was going on. You just know. Well, what does that say about Jesus saying the birth pains are just the beginning? Or the beginning is the birth pain. Are we in that experience right now as humans in this process of, and this idea, and I started to formulate this idea of, are we in the life of going through the birth pains? We have ups and downs. We have lefts and rights. We have heartaches and really strong things that just punch us in the gut or make us feel like we're trying to push a bowling ball out of a pencil hole, right? You never thought we'd talk about this in church, would we? But is that just the beginning? Is that what life is like so that we know in the end our birth is into the new established kingdom of heaven with God and God's people from all the years past? Is that the end experience when Jesus comes to earth once again restores all of this great creation into the, the, the experience that God created it to be in the beginning. It opened up new doors for me. It opened up a new light of, of what this world is all about. It, doesn't, it, provide, it does provide some comfort, but it also provides me some angst. Because I know the things that are happening to our friends and around us, to our refugees that are experiencing strife, to many people who are going hungry, to folks who don't have a place to call home, uh, to, to kids maybe who don't hear the word of Jesus at home and at church and in the community. Those are the pains that we struggle with. 
So how and what do we do? Well, when I hear about the people of Purim and the people of Calvary, my assumption, which is pretty good, is that you understand the why you are Christians and you are continually working on and establishing this process centered of why we follow Jesus. You also do that in the what's and the how's we explain that. Today, from the time that Pastor Phil stood up to when Cass, Pastor Cassie came in and told you your sins are forgiven, you know the true love of Christ and how to share in that experience. The pictures that are around your sanctuary, the messages that we heard up on the screen about refugee resettlement, the experience of gathering money for your noisy offering, and the fun little competition that you have are grand experiences and expressions of our love to one another in the name of Jesus. You helping your dingalingers raise the dollars, or just ringers, excuse me, not dingalings. <laughs> you helping raise those dollars uh, have, have provided an opportunity to share in God's message again. You, and on behalf of Luther Crest, have helped uh, kids get to camp and hear the story and the love of Jesus through the eyes of some wonderful uh, college-age kids who are expressing their love and their opportunity, their understanding. You've also helped us raise over 33000 to help build our Luther Crest brand new cabins through Prepare the Way. You are all expressing the hows and the whats of your faith through those donations. You are also doing it in many other ways, through your times and talents, through your hugs, through your smiles, through your gift of music, through your gift of presence, through the gift of, of, of greeting one another and sharing in that midst, is that you're living in the true sense of who, God, uh, of who God created to be. We know we have the ups and downs. We know how we have the lefts and rights. Maybe we don't always feel like we're the right person. But we know in God's graciousness and in God's love that God is holding us together in the name of Jesus. And that's where, when we sit and hear about these end times, we live in the joyful words that Jesus says, is to stay awake be ready. You know, you think of those times when you hear the coach clapping, you know, and when the guys are running down or the gals are running down, keep wait, stay focused. This experience here today, when you're with other folks speaking about Jesus and knowing about Christ and sharing in conversation, these are great times for us to hear that clapping going on. Stay awake. Keep going. Live and love so that all will know who Jesus is. And those are the things that uh, bring excitement, that bring a focus in when we talk about the love and sacrifice that Jesus made for us in these coming days as we walk through Lent to Good Friday and ultimately to the resurrection on Easter. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Will you rise as you are able as we confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the offering and also have an offering of music.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious Lord, we do offer our whole selves to you, all that we have, our time, our talents, our possessions, knowing that you have given us all that we have and all that we are. We lift up prayers for creation, for those who are in need of healing, and for those who grieve, especially the Palmers as they grieve the death of their son, Ryan. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.